Welcome to Inside Kern. I'm your host, Katie Price. Inside Kern's goal is to help expose the inner workings of Kern County government and how they affect you in your daily life. In this episode, you'll get a unique look at an early intervention program geared toward children that are dealing with the allure of gang life. But first, the Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution guarantees citizens the right to a speedy trial, trial by jury, and most importantly, representation by legal counsel. When a citizen cannot afford to retain a private legal counsel, the Public Defender's Office steps in. The Kern County Public Defender's Office is staffed by some of the sharpest legal minds anywhere, and they passionately battle daily to ensure the rights of all citizens. I'm the public defender for Kern County. I've been here since 1996, actually December 1995. Uh, before that, I was the chief assistant public defender in Yolo County and up in Davis. And before that, I started in the Kern County Public Defender's Office in Ventura County in 1977. And I've been a public defender my entire career. The well, Founding Fathers had the wisdom to provide for the right to counsel in the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution. And as public defenders in this office, we love the Constitution. We love the right to counsel, and we relish our opportunity to defend the rights of the individual. Uh, it always hasn't been that case in, in uh, this country. Although the, the uh, Sixth Amendment to the uh, Constitution, the right to counsel, was uh, uh, placed there by the Founding Fathers, it really wasn't fulfilled until 1961 in the case of Clarence uh, uh, Earl Gideon, who was arrested for breaking into a cigarette machine in a pool hall in Florida. And Clarence was charged with that offense, went to uh, court, and Clarence requested a right to counsel. He said, how could I possibly defend myself against this uh, seasoned prosecutor who's been prosecuting cases for uh, 30 years. I never graduated from high school. How can I get a fair trial? I thought I was entitled to the right to counsel and a fair trial. I can get neither uh, in this case. The court, of course, denied his motion. He went to trial and he was convicted. In, while in jail, in pencil, he wrote a handwritten petition to the United States Supreme Court, who granted certiorari on the case, heard the case, agreed with Mr. Gideon, and reversed the case. Uh, it went back to the Florida trial court. He was appointed counsel on those very same facts with the very same uh, prosecutor. He was then acquitted by a jury because he was represented by counsel. We have a great office, an absolutely great office. We spend a lot of time recruiting individuals who have a great respect for the Constitution of the United States and who will feel personally compelled to provide the right to counsel for individuals accused of crime. We also provide some we, uh, service to uh, civil uh, litigants as well, conservatorships. We provide dependency for foster children who have no criminal uh, activity whatsoever. Uh, they're not charged with uh, any crimes of any nature, but they're entitled to representation in their foster care setting because they're dependents of the court and we provide representation uh, for all those children. I, I went to the University of California at Berkeley, uh, graduated from there, went initially to work uh, in the area of accounting, got my CPA license and then decided I wanted to go to law school. I graduated from the uh, University of California Berkeley School of Law and uh, for the last coming up on eight years I've been working here as an attorney for Mark Arnold in the Public Defender's Office. Well, my name is Janice Kim, and uh, I'm a felony trial attorney um, at the Kern County Public Defender's Office, and I've been here for uh, six years. My name is Arturo Revelo. I'm, uh, I'm a public defender, deputy public defender. I've been here for, will be two years, ten months. Uh, before that, I was in private practice in the Bay Area. My name is Peter Kang. I graduated from UC Berkeley and got my law degree from UC San Francisco Hastings. Um, I work a uh, whole gamut of cases dealing from 
your minor felonies to your major felonies and right now I'm working on a murder case that's set to go next Monday. My responsibilities uh, at prisoner, I supervise the misdemeanor team responsible for overseeing uh, the, the misdemeanor operations and training the new attorneys. I handle cases ranging from uh, drug possession, drug sales, um, homicides, um, what else, robberies, um, child molestation, um, just everything. This is a job that requires that you actually like people. Yeah, in our unit, we're the misdemeanor unit, so you start out in misdemeanors, which is a broad range of cases. It could be uh, drug or alcohol related cases, also uh, disputes that people have uh, with each other that may turn physical. Uh, we handle domestic violence cases, we handle um, battery cases, so uh, the whole gamut of misdemeanor matters, which carry with them potential jail time uh, in the county, so we do not handle felonies in this division, which uh, felonies are handled uh, by the more experienced attorneys. I was born and raised in Armenia and also we lived in Russia. So I speak both Armenian and Russian, on top of English, hopefully. <laughs> I am the second son of Korean immigrants that moved in the 1970s. Um, my dad tells me the story that my mom and uh, he moved here when when they were in their 30s, about my age, uh, with $100 in their pocket. And he worked jobs as a pineapple cutter. My mom worked at Bumblebee Tuna as a tuna cannery employee. And things were really tough. They lived in these kind of slumlord environments. And um, they saved everything so my brother and I can go to school and try to do something with our lives. I have a BA in Law and Society from UC Santa Barbara. Uh, I have a double minor there, History and Philosophy. Uh, I was there from 95 to 2000. And then I took three years off. I was a banker for a couple of years. I also did some electoral work, political electoral work in Santa Barbara County. Uh, and then I moved to the Midwest. And I lived in Northwest Indiana for three years where I went to law school. Graduated May of 06, took the bar uh, February of 07, and I swore into the bar December of 07 on my birthday, December 6th, uh, and then I've been practicing since February 19th, March 19th. We moved from Russia to Los Angeles in 1996. Uh, I went to UCLA for my undergraduate degree, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, and then I went to law school, um, University of California, Davis, up north, um, graduated, became an attorney, and have been doing criminal defense since um, last year, January. I would say the Public Defender's Office, uh, we've worked to, to, Mark Arnold has worked to, to really build and assemble and attract a top-notch group of folks. We have uh, both very diverse uh, educationally, geographically. We have uh, uh, attorneys from, graduated from Columbia Law School, UCLA, Bolt Hall up in Berkeley. We have uh, Summer interns uh, this this year that are going to be joining us from Stanford Law School and, a, and another one from Berkeley. Um, there really has been a developed and, and concerted effort to attract and retain top-notch talent. We're not in the business of getting individuals off, as they so often say in Hollywood. Our business is to provide representation to see that the process is fair. And when the process is not fair, you, result, uh, you have the result of, unfortunately, uh, having the result of multiple uh, erroneous convictions. And wrongful convictions allow the individual who committed the offense to walk free and punishes the individual for something he didn't do. I think what we're doing is taking people without um, the same life opportunities. They come to us in a lot of ways very uh, damaged from things that they had no control over and we're there to help rehabilitate them and um, maybe look out for their interests. I think the best thing about my job is um, actually feeling that you're helping someone. Most people don't come here just because of the great benefits and the money. They come here because they really feel that they can do something for humanity, if you want to put it in those perspectives. You know, it's a real contribution for that. We represent people that uh, 
go through the some of the hardest um, experiences in their lives alone. And when they're sitting in court, they generally only have you. What I love about this job mostly is uh, being able to bring the education, the empowerment that I've been so graciously blessed with, being able to take that back to my community, bring that to the people who uh, do not understand the system, um, are not empowered with the tools, the resources. Uh, we're able to give that to people who couldn't afford it otherwise. And it's incredibly fulfilling, it's incredibly empowering, and uh, I couldn't imagine doing anything else, truthfully. I think it's a study in patience. Um, what we do uh, really helps in terms of almost a Zen meditative state. You're dealing with people who are extremely, at times, hostile and damaged, and then you see a transformation because you start believing and working on your case, and a lot of times they don't have that. And sometimes you, you're the only person who ever believed in them. I, I would say for, for the majority, for, for basically every attorney I know in this office, people don't go into to work for a public defender's office because of, of the money. I mean, lawyers make a lot more in private practice. We work here because it's, it's what we want to do, because we have the opportunity to work, to, to contribute to people's lives, to hopefully improve the, uh, the, the quality of the, the criminal justice system uh, for the community and uh, to, to help people. I mean, that's, it, it really is a situation where uh, it's, it's personally fulfilling um, in, in terms of working to help people. This is not the easiest county in the state of California uh, to defend individuals given the law and order presence that we, uh, that we have in Kern County. I mean, we have our hands full here defending the accused in Kern County. I think there's a legal fiction that you're presumed innocent until, uh, presumed other, until proven otherwise. Yeah. I think it's, it's definitely a legal fiction that everyone is presumed innocent there, and that there's a cloak of innocence that garbs all of us. I think most of the jurors and most of the public view people who go through this court process as being guilty, that they wouldn't have made it this far, they wouldn't have gone to trial, that the justice system would have found the guilty party. Um, and I think there's a real motivation and an incentive with law enforcement to try to you know, uh, convict at all costs because it's convenient. And they sometimes forget that people with criminal records, people who don't fall within um, a strict guideline of what a, a productive citizen is, um, it can be wrongfully accused. A lot of people, and very well-intentioned people, um, will often cast judgments on people based on an accusation that's been made against them. Uh, the power of an accusation is profound. And so when a person has been charged with a crime, has been accused of something, it is uh, incredibly difficult to fight that because when people hear a person's name and charges associated with that, they often think that it must be true or there is some truth to it. And there are lots of complications involved, lots of nuances. And so uh, fighting that is particularly difficult because People are presumed innocent until proven guilty, or at least they should be. That's what's guaranteed to us in both our state and uh, federal constitutions. Um, but it, in a practical sense, uh, the accusation is powerful, and so we have to fight that. You know, it's a very conservative community, um, and, you know, it's a very pro-law enforcement type of, I mean, you know, it's just very, conservative and it's it's always um, an uphill battle I think. Yeah. I, I got admonished by a few judges that said to me, you know, Mr. Revelo, when you refer to the government as accusing your client, you need to remember that you also work for the government. And of course you don't want to get into great debates with judges, uh, uh, but you do have to be clear in your mind, and I am, that I get paid by the taxpayers just like he does, but my responsibility professionally and ethically 
morally is to my client. It is really, really significant what you can do for someone who's been put in a bad situation, who uh, maybe was at the wrong place at the wrong time, or um, you can really, really help someone if you are committed. And that's, I have found uh, that that's pretty rare. Uh, the ability to help someone in their legal problems uh, is significant, and, and the outcome is, can be very beneficial. I think there is that, that conception, I mean, whether when you talk about people at cocktail parties or, or whatever, but I would say anyone who's ever been arrested will tell you how important that presumption of innocence is. And certainly anyone who's ever felt that they've been falsely accused, uh, ha have been the victim of mistaken identity, I mean, you know, the, the, the just absolute essential nature of, of those presumptions go to, to the very heart. Uh, of, of our system of justice and uh, I you know it would be it'd be sort of cynical to say no you know it's all it's it's always presumed uh, presumed guilty and as I say I have even though I think people do come in with some measure of, of, of preconceptions uh, and you know the media plays some some role in in in, in some instances in, in sort of contributing to to sort of prejudgments Juries absolutely do a, a terrific job in, in working to set aside those preconceptions and, and applying the law in, uh, in an honest way. Our uh, function, unfortunately, has been portrayed as trying to get individuals off, as representing heinous uh, uh, murderers and, and uh, clients with uh, despicable backgrounds, which isn't the case. Uh, most of the cases we handle, 99% of the time, or low-profile cases that never make the, the headlines where an individual uh, has been arrested and accused of a crime. It's not our obligation to spring that individual. Our, op our, our obligation is to, fill, uh, to see that his constitutional rights are fulfilled, respected, and honored. And if he's to be convicted, he's convicted fairly. And if he's to be sentenced, he's sentenced fairly. Generally, public defenders are viewed First of all, I mean, you know, government, bureaucracy, right? Um, people who are helping the court, um, you know, they basically think that we are not really doing, um, we are not on their side. That's very uh, broad and, you know, general misperception. So, but I think once clients get to know us personally, once they see that we, in fact, are there on their side, we are representing them, and we are taking them to jury trial and stuff like that. Once we have we establish the relationship with the clients, they realize that's a very wrong misperception. So, um, you win some, you lose some. Uh, it is challenging in that sense uh, because we are fighting an uphill battle. Uh, but you have an opportunity here to dramatically affect a person's life in a way that is going to seriously affect them now and in the future. And so if you can push and push and continue fighting, uh, you can help either resolve somebody's matter in a way that's going to be extremely beneficial to them financially, in terms of their liberty interests, in terms of their future, you know, their uh, criminal record. Um, so with persistence, you can really affect the outcome for a person, and that is never to be understated. It's very rewarding, otherwise, uh, believe me, you know, we would not be here. Most public defenders, really, and I think in this office too, they really do it because they believe in it, they, because they love it. You can't, I mean, generally speaking, you can't do a job if you don't like it, okay? You can't come to work, smile, and, you know, satisfy your supervisors if you don't like it. And especially with attorneys and the wor workload that we've got, volume of the cases, sometimes it's really horrendous. However, if you like it, you've got a positive attitude, you'll do it with satisfaction. Well, I'm extremely proud of uh, the attorneys that we have here and the job that we do. And uh, I'm hopeful that the, the members of the community know that we work hard to deliver aggressive uh, and, and caring uh, legal representation to those folks that we have the privilege to represent. Yes, I, go, I work for the government, but my responsibility is to my clients. 
gang activity is at an all-time high, and every day more of our children feel the pressure to join a gang or take part in gang-related activities. That's why the Kern County Probation Department formed the Early Intervention Program. This program is designed to teach at-risk kids in our community, educate them in anger management, provide them with after-school and vacation activities such as summer day camps, and hopefully steer them away from gang life. We pretty much run groups and we work with at-risk children um, out of, and we're stationed out of schools from the east side of Bakersfield. We work with juveniles uh, between the ages of approximately about 8 to 12 years old, so um, second through sixth grade. I think we have about 20 to 30 schools altogether. Each officer has uh, between four to five schools that they're assigned to. A lot of the kids that we're working with have various problems, whether it be um, domestic violence issues in the home, substance abuse issues, um, gang involvement issues. I mean, it just varies. It depends. And um, they're usually, well, they're usually picked out by school counselors or principals, and they're usually kids that have a lot of problems in school whether it be suspensions, expulsions, um, they get sent to continuation schools, fights, and things of that sort. So who brought their homework? Who brought their homework? Their mom brought his homework. Their homework. You lost your homework? Oh my gosh. Oh, so you, you did put it inside the shoe like I told you? Good job. So you were paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you guys. Oh, man. See, that was an easy four points right there. We have officers transport all over um, through Central Bakersfield, Southeast Bakersfield, East Bakersfield, and Central Bakersfield, and then the Oildale area. Our officers pick up the kids that are in the program and transport them out to the facility here at North of the River. And we start off with a snack um, in a few games while they're, everyone's arriving and then we go out and we play usually sports with them. We either do basketball, dodgeball, baseball, we do some kind of recreational activity and then we also have gymnastics that we're doing here at the facility. One group will go and get gymnastics and then from there we go into groups and then they get their anger control groups. It came from the gang strategic plan. Uh, they really, the Board of Supervisors, realized in probation that we need to really work in the intervention aspect more. We do a lot of suppression, but not enough intervention. And so we're really working, that's why we're dealing with the at-risk youth. We've done studies to look at all the probationers within Kern County. We went to the highest areas where we have probationers and we're working in those elementary schools. I think we are making a difference because we're giving them an outlet. You know, like for instance, this summer, a lot of these kids will be sitting at home, unsupervised, running the streets, um, hanging out with you know older, you know older youth that sometimes influence them into doing negative things. So here we are, you know, as an outlet for them to do positive things, like this summer program that we're doing. Um, they come, you know, we do activities with them. We play football, soccer, we do gymnastics. Um, last year we actually had more activities. We did archery, and we did swimming every Friday. Um, and we also teach them evidence-based programs like um, teaching pro-social skills as well as anger, re anger reduction and um, anger management. So I think, we, I think we absolutely make a difference. You know, we have the early intervention program which deals with at-risk youth. Um, so we work with the at-risk youth in our, in our unit and try to intervene early on to keep them from ending up on probation. So during our summer program, we are working with the kids three days a week, and we bring to them the teaching for social skills and aggression replacement training, which helps them deal with their anger. I think it's extremely important because, um, I mean, everybody can agree that locking people up just 
isn't a deterrent any longer. You know, they keep coming back into the system. They keep getting locked up and coming right back. So I think that it's important to target people at an earlier age, which is what we're doing right now, and working with them and giving them different options, you know. Instead of having to go to a gang for support, you know, they can join a program like EIP. They can be referred to us and, you know, see that there's more, there's more out there than joining gangs and, you know, substance abuse and any of that stuff. Somebody, when, I, when we were going inside class, somebody took my, um, my money from my backpack. And then it was one, one of the kids inside my class. And um, I hit him. And I was, I was really angry. Okay, you were really angry? How do you feel that, I mean, you said that the outcome was a fight, right? That you hit him. How do you think that you felt? How do you think you did? What, what grade did you give yourself? One. Because you did poorly, right? What do you think you could have done differently? Instead of reacting the way you did? Um, so I to give me back my money or tell the teacher. Okay, you could call the teacher. What was the trigger in that? Let's, let's walk it through. Let's walk through the anger chain on that one. Start with triggers, right? He took my money. I think that after you work with somebody for, you know, because we work for them for, with, for nine months, um, you get you grow attached to them, you know. And sometimes I feel like I don't know. Like I have one boy in particular. I'm not going to mention any names, but he just barely recently graduated from our program, and like I miss him now. I'm like, okay, my little boy. I, I think about okay how he's going to be doing. Sometimes I wonder how they're going to be when they you know become older and if they're going to make the right choices. So yeah, I, I grow very attached to them, very much so. For the most part, the kids that we have worked with and that have gone through our program, some of them are doing better, considerably better. I mean, they're, they've gone back to regular school and they actually think now. Um, let me give you an example of that. We worked with this, uh, a young boy that went through our program and I still see him at the schools that I work at. And when I talked to him, he actually told me, you know what, I think that the program really changed my life. And I told him in one sense. And he told me, um, well, it makes me think before, before I do anything. It makes me think and evaluate, OK, is it going to be worth it? It does make a difference. I just, I just love my whole job. I think this, this is an awesome assignment. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. I couldn't ask for anything better. These kids are very impressionable. And they're great kids. They're just dealing with a lot of challenging circumstances in their life, um, between their family circumstances and gang issues. So more important than anything, we need to put our resources there. The gang issue is something we all need to work towards. It's all of our problems, not just one agency. If we all get together um, and realize that it does take a whole community to raise a child, that's the most important thing. It's the hope of the probation department that by raising a child's self-esteem and teaching them how to resolve confrontations and disputes peacefully, they can help break the vicious cycle of gang violence in our community. If you're interested in finding out more on these segments or other departments in Kern County, you can go to our website at www.co.kern.ca.us. For myself, the crew, and KGov, we hope you've enjoyed this look inside Kern.